Hi, Brian Thomas here from world-renowned Born This Way Body Arts in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today I'm going to show you another anodizing trick on how to do uh, striping on your jewelry, often referred to as like the candy cane striping or something silly like that. Um, the first step is we have to understand how anodizing actually works. During anodizing, what happens is when we electrocute the jewelry, we're causing an oxide layer to build up on the jewelry. The thickness of the oxide layer determines on how the light refracts off of the jewelry, which is how our eye perceives color. So. At the lowest voltage, we're going to start at like a bronzy color, and then as we move up the spectrum and the layer increases in thickness, um, we're going to go all the way up here, and then we'll end it green. Um, and then in the middle is all of our different variations on that. With the candy striping, I think it's usually best to just stick with two colors, and um, you want to do colors that are obviously going to offset one another so you can tell that they're striping on there. What I'm going to do today is we're going to go with like a nice uh, dark purpley color, and then I'm going to go with uh, some stripes that are like a nice yellow color. Um, and here's our piece of jewelry right now um, in its normal state, nice high polished titanium. Since we're going to do a base color of blue and then add yellow stripes, we have to remember the way that the spectrum works. Um, and I, I meant to say purple and yellow, not blue and purple, but regardless, since purple is at the very bottom end of our spectrum and yellow is above that, if I were to go through and make the entire piece of jewelry purple and then try to add yellow stripes to it, what would happen is everything would end up turning yellow because yellow is above the purple. So what I'm going to actually start with is we're going to start with doing everything purple, then I'm going to remove the beads off the piece, I'm going to isolate the parts on the jewelry that I want to stay purple, and the parts that are exposed will then turn yellow. Um, I'll show you that in just a second, and hopefully it'll make a little more sense. Okay, our barbell has been submerged into a cup of uh, distilled water with some powdered uh, phosphates added to it to help conduct, and I have my anodizer set at about 24 volts. I'm going to go ahead and tap it with my wand here. Then we'll notice we're getting that nice coppery color. And as we come up the spectrum a little bit, we're going to get into that nice purpley color. Um, it's important to, when you're doing this method, to tap your jewelry a lot. You're going to get little bubbles of oxygen that actually cling onto the, uh, the piece of jewelry. And what happens is those oxygen bubbles will actually block the, uh, the anodizing from occurring. So if you tap it and smack it, all those little bubbles will uh, float away and allow you to get a nice solid coloring on your piece. Now the barbell's been taken out of the solution and you'll notice that there's a handful of O-rings next to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew the beads off of the jewelry and then I'm going to slide the O-rings over the shaft of the barbell. What that's going to do is anywhere that the O-rings are touching the barbell, it's going to isolate the um, the, it's going to isolate the anodizing process. Basically, it's going to block off the current from touching that part of the jewelry, and therefore that purple color will stay behind. Any place that's not isolated with the O-rings will then change color as we're going to go to a higher voltage. This can be obtained a number of different ways. I use O-rings because they're the easiest thing around. They also make like an anodizing tape um, that you can cut into little strips and things like that. So you can do all kinds of fun, creative things with your jewelry. Um, once again, just experiment with different things and see how it works. All right, here you see the barbell shaft, and what I've done is just I've uh, put those O-rings around there. I did two in the very middle and then one on each outside, uh, hopefully to give it a nice cool effect. I'm going to drop it in my cup of solution there, and we're going to fire the anodizer back up. This time I'm going to bring it up to about 63 volts, which gives us a nice yellowy color. And we'll figure out a good way to see this here. Alright. Sorry about the uh, quality here. I'm shooting on my cell phone. Alright, anodizer's at 63 volts. We're going to go ahead and tap the jewelry. And we'll see it lighten up there. And everything is changed into that nice yellow color. Okay. Turn my anodizer off and I'll pull this out of the thing and rinse it off and steam it real quick. Okay, the jewelry has been rinsed off and steamed and just notice it's nice and yellow everywhere. I'm going to pop those O-rings off clumsily with one hand here. And you can see that it left some 
nice little purple stripes here. Now, though, it ended up being a little thinner with the single ones than I had originally hoped for. Uh, once again, you can always go back and adjust things. And in the middle, we have that thicker line since I double stack the O-rings on there. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the whole barbell and take it outside into some natural light and show you what the finished product looks like. All right, and here is our finished product. Uh, purple balls with the yellow shaft and then that purple stripe in the middle and a couple on the outside of the shaft that you can barely see there. Um, once again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure to click that follow button or subscribe, whatever it is on YouTube, uh, so that way you catch all of our videos. Look forward to hearing your comments. Thanks.